I'm Chosen Architect, and this is All The Mods 9, and today, well, we get started with Industrial 4 going, the bees behind me, some flight, and even a time in the bottle. Hopefully you guys are ready. Now, today is going to be jam-packed, full of awesome things that we are going to get done, including diving into one of my favorite tech mods, Industrial 4 going. And we're going to get a little bit latexy in that go-around, but I promise you, today is going to be a bit more than just Industrial 4 going because we still need to automate the piglitch, but there's also several things such as the time in the bottle, getting bees semi set up with some sort of automation to make the time in the bottle and getting ourselves some creative flight is definitely gonna be some do's today. Now, first things first, let's get some bees. So unfortunately this bee is going to be lost, but there are already three bees in here. So I'm gonna grab this. I am going to need, however, at least I want three hives if we can. Having three bees in this one hive is actually really nice. Uh, but I am on the lookout for more beehives. But uh, I'd prefer to have three to get started. And here's the second one. And it sort of has two bees in it. And perfect. Here's another one. So this is going to be pretty nice having three of these to start off with. Why three, you might ask? Well, it's kind of an odd number. I don't know. Honestly, the more the merrier sometimes. So setting up these bees were actually quite fun. So you place the hive hoppers on the bottom of the hives. And then the bees will go in and the hive hopper will automatically farm the bees for you. So this is pretty neat. So if we take a look at this and I have a little trapdoor system to get down here. Um, if we take a look in here, we'll see it is farming honeycombs and also honey. So that means that we can pop in here and grab our honeycombs or honey. But what if we actually set up some drawers that can do the same thing over here and allow us access to it? Simply just farming the items from underneath and then just telling it where to go. I think that would be pretty neat. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's say one of these is going to be honeycomb storage and one is actually gonna be blocks of honey. Now this gives us honey itself. So if we use the blast chiller, we can simply use this from thermal and feed it the honey and it will produce the honey blocks, which kind of makes this very simple. So all we're going to need to do is just simply pipe in the honey, but we need to pull fluids and items out of the hive hopper. That's where we're going to have limited options on things we can do to keep this compact. And I think laser IO in this situation is going to be a little overkill, but also going to be necessary. Now setting up the nodes under here, it's gonna be pretty simple. We have five nodes total, and we're going to need to link to all of them. So we just simply need to link them all together. That's not a hard task to do. And these actually will connect through blocks. So that's pretty neat as well. So now this is all connected as one grid. You can kind of see the lasers pointing through the blocks, which is exactly what we want. And uh, we're going to need a few item cards and we're also need a few fluid cards. And of course, it's going to be best if we use our card holder to simply put all of our cards in here. That way we can separate and sort of configure them as needed. But on this, it's going to be pretty straightforward. We need uh, fluid cards and we're also going to need an item card uh, that is going to be connected to these hoppers. Um, so fluid and item card, not a big deal. We can just shift right click them directly in, uh, which makes this very, very fast. Now these are going to be all set to extract. Um, and the fluid cards are going to be set to extract as well, but I'm still missing one machine that I haven't placed in yet. And that is the blast chiller. So I'm going to place the blast chiller down here and that gives me the ability to put some power onto it. And then inside the configuration for this. I just want to make sure it's set to auto extract and insert. And I'm going to set this to in and out. So it's going to pull in and it's going to send out from the same side. Now, all of my cards connected to the hive hopper, they just need to be set to extract. Um, and I believe that there is a copy tool that you can make from laser IO now that makes the copying of settings a little bit easier. Um, and it's called the card cloner. So if I go ahead and make this, there we go. Uh, it gives me a few options. Um, it says hold to show settings. Well, we have type none, but I believe that we can take this and there's a card cloner. We should be able to right click to copy and then to paste, we simply left click. So uh, with me doing this, I'm going to copy this card right here and let's go ahead and also set this one to extract. And so on all of them, I can just simply right click to copy and then on each one of these, fluid cards, I can punch supposedly to paste. It doesn't seem like that's the case. Maybe it's the exact opposite of what I'm telling you. So we copy with right click 
and then we paste. There we go. Okay. So left click is to copy, right click is to paste. For some reason, it wasn't showing those settings. So this does make it a little bit easier to sort of get your settings where you want them um, for all of your cards quickly. It's kind of a neat little tool and definitely a quality of life. So I'm writing to the card and then I should be able to paste, right? I think I have it backwards. Okay, there we go. Perfect. <laughs> so all of them are changing. Nice. Once I get this figured out, it will make things a lot faster. Now connected to the blast chiller, this is where we're going to need a item card and a fluid card. Um, except on this go around, we're going to have the item card. Uh, it's going to be set a little bit differently. Um, we're going to want the fluid card to be set to insert, which is perfect. So it's inserting into here. But the item card we want to be set to extract. Um, and then we should be able to automatically send the items without any need of filters because it's automatically going to know where to send them into the drawer. We just need to tell it to send into the drawer. So that's going to be another item card that's just set to insert. And that also needs to be an insert over here as well. So hopefully that wasn't too confusing. This all should technically work and we should start to see combs build up. And then once we have enough honey, it should convert that honey over time into honey blocks and they'll end up right here. So when we close this up, it's going to look very clean <laughs> and, and it should. Uh, now, something I want to check and make sure everything is working is just to open the hive hoppers and just make sure that everything is empty out of all of them. And it looks like they are. And that means everything is working. Ah, that is perfect. So now we can just sort of set it and forget it. So this setup right here is going to help me build up some early game resources such as the honeycombs and stuff. So that way we can make honeycomb seeds from mystical agriculture. That's ultimately what we're going to want to do. But we're going to need to build up first of that before we really dive into the bees mod. So uh, yeah, the productive bees is going to take a lot of time and a lot of honeycombs to do. So we want that set up in mystical agriculture, I think, first before we really start to dive further into it. Now, while that's all processing up, I think it's about time that we actually get into some creative flight. Now, up to this point, I have been using my trusty jetpack, which works just fine. It is very, very nice. But I think some sort of creative flight will be very helpful. However, it is quite expensive. It does cost an elytra to get started, a lot of umtanium and vibranium and all the modium. And we're going to be making the energetic angel ring. That's ultimately the process we're going to need to go through. It's going to require a bit of unobtainium. Now, I've already made up the furnaces and set up the automation for all of the furnaces. So that's actually already done. The only thing we need is a block of netherite. And so we can make the base ring, which is this right here. And then we're going to upgrade that with the unobtainium blocks, four of them, which thankfully we do have. And we have nether stars automated now, so that's pretty easy. And then we get the regular angel ring. Now this one runs off of your experience. So depending on how much experience you have, this will work just fine. And uh, we should be able to even take off the jetpack while we use this. But I think I want the one that uses power. So I don't have to kind of worry about my experience, even though if we have enough of it, it's not gonna be too burdensome, but here we go. We should now have an angel ring and it's gonna start to fill up with power. And what I should be able to do is just simply toss our jetpack out of our inventory for now. And this should be able to go in the uh, the angel slot. So now we should have regular creative flight, uh, which is very nice. Now it's not super, super fast like the jetpack is. That's the one benefit of the jetpack. That's why I kept it in my bag. For times you want to travel long distances, it's probably best to have that because you can travel a lot faster. But with this, just having regular sustainable creative flight is going to be really helpful. And no longer do we have the sound or particles. So after getting our creative flight, this is now ready to go. We already now have enough honeycombs from our bees that are just passively producing them, which I also think is kind of a nice looking thing to have over here. But we now have enough that we should be able to make the seed. So all we need for this seed is going to be these honey um, agglomerate or agglomeratio. I'm I always butcher that, uh, but we're going to need this, which we should be able to get from our honey blocks. That is going to be plenty of honey bottles. And then we just need to make four of these. So there we go. And we have plenty for this. Oh, this is perfect. This essence is insanely powerful for getting into the resourceful bees mod. So let's travel through the FPS reducing zone. <laughs> oh no, it is so bad over here for frame rate. 
Uh, but we can go ahead and put this here, this here, and then last but not least, the seed in the middle. And there we go. We will now have honey seeds, which I believe is one of the only seeds that we're going to need for a while. I think this is one of the last ones, um, aside from some of the stuff that we're going to need for mechanism. So with that, we almost have everything we need now to craft the time in the bottle, which this will help us with mods in the future, such as the cultism. That's going to really, really speed things up um, with that mod, especially things that just take time to process, not necessarily more resources. It's just nothing we can control except for how long it takes. This is the perfect thing for it. Now, making speed augments aren't that bad. We're just going to be able to use the same process that we have. And we just need these regular tunes here. And uh, if we take a look, we should be able to just immediately craft them or pull the ingredients out for them. And we're going to need two of them. So two each. And we'll make sure to do both of these processes together simultaneously. It looks like it's just sugar with like each tier. Um, leading all the way up, it says Prodidium, Tritium, okay, and it just goes up to the blue tier. So, with that knowledge, we can go in here and we can go ahead and pull all of that out. Man, you gotta admit, this setup right here is so convenient. So now with that, we should be ready to go. The reason we got into bees was mostly for this, of course, and also to be able to get those seeds. And all we need is some honeycomb blocks. So, let's take our honeycombs. And there we go. We need four of these, by the way. Um, and I don't remember. Let's see. Can the essence make it? No, it can just make the combs. So there we go. So we can make plenty of combs now, which is amazing. And so just four of them. Um, and then we just need a few clocks. Just like that. And a base, which is going to require a honey treat, which is actually kind of new. But we should be able to make bottles with that essence. So there we go. And now we can also make honey blocks. So all of this leads up to these honey treats, which we're going to be using a lot in productive bees. But for right now, it's mostly going to be used for getting ourselves a time in the bottle. Oh, I can't wait to have this ready to go because this is going to be super, super helpful down the road. I'm going to be thanking myself for grabbing this and getting that time started. Now, it's at this point where you're probably going to want to watch that time. And I can tell you what, it will increase way faster than you might think. The next thing you're going to know, I'm going to have 6, 12, 48 hours on this thing because I do spend a lot of time making these videos. So if you haven't already clicked that subscribe, now is a great time to do so. And that's because most of these episodes contain anywhere between four to six to even eight hours worth of gameplay all inside of one episode. Now, there's still one other thing that I should probably get set up before diving fully into the industrial foregoing mod. And by the way, the reason we're going to get into the dust before going on is so that way we can produce even more all the modium, unobtainium, all of these resources that come from all the mods. We want to be able to generate them through the digital miner and the digital miner can produce them way faster than I think just about anything else in this pack. So getting that set up is going to be necessity. Now, back to what I was going to do before we do that. <laughs> if it's not confusing enough. Well, we are going to need to set up the pig lich. And it's quite easy now that we have the Morgan sword from last episode, we should be able to completely annihilate the pig liches and well, get them programmed and get them inside one of our programmers over here. So from hostile neural networks should be pretty straightforward. Right now I have the dragon running in here. Oh my goodness, I never chose what to set these to. Uh, let's set them to uh, uh, green hearts, uh, dragon's breath, uh, dragon eggs maybe for right now. Uh, but yes, those are running. That means there's probably a backlog over here, but I need to get it inside of the prediction matrix. And so it's going to be hostile neural networks time yet again. And all I've got to do is click on this. And I'm pretty excited, honestly, to see how fast we are going to be able to potentially take out the piglitch that we've had in our inventory this entire time. Let me dig out a little bit of a hole here. Nothing special. Place it in, and, well, let's hit it a few times. Oh my goodness. We can take that out quite quick. Okay, let's make sure to put it in here. I'm going to put it in my offhand so we can keep track. We're going to need to kill six of them. And thankfully, this Morgan sword seems to be doing quick work. Oh my gosh. It's gone. It's And it gave me two hearts, because it rolls the loot twice, because we have an enchant on here that does that. So that's quite nice. <laughs>
So I am back in the other, and something to mention is, well, even though we have create a flight with our flight module, we still, we cannot complete, like, we cannot fly. So that's always something to keep in mind. Look how many piglitches there are, by the way. And we are just able to tear right through them. This is going to be quite easy, I think. Look at this. It's almost gone. I think it's the Vorpal that's really doing the brunt of the work. Right? It's definitely Vorpal. And before I know it, this one is going to be gone as well. And that is the last one we need. Perfect. So now we just need to put it in our prediction matrix. And we should be able to automate the production of piglet charts, which are going to be fundamental to the end in getting the Aldemont star. Something to note that the piglet does cost a lot of FE. It costs 16,000 FE exactly to be able to produce these predictions. That is quite a lot. So now with that in place and with it selected to give me piglet hearts from this, we can now get into industrial foregoing. And this is going to be quite interesting. So this is going to be the first time that I'm introducing well, fluid crafting into refined storage, and it is used a lot in this mod. Um, so to be able to do this, all we got to do is start producing latex. But this mod has actually updated and is a lot easier to get into than it used to be. You can now craft the latex processing unit, which normally would require a single bucket of latex. You can now craft it without that bucket. So it is a lot simpler now to get into. It used to cost water and a whole bucket of latex. So there was a bit of sort of waiting that you had to do once you set up your initial latex gatherer, which is using the fluid extractor on some logs. Let's go and get that set up. So for this, I'm going to utilize the space up here. And all I need to do is simply place in a modular router. And this modular router is going to have a placer module on it. And I'm going to set it to place the item on the front. And this is just going to be a simple block placer. Now, if you have problems with this not placing blocks, you're going to make sure to open up your uh, FTB map and then click the little purple cog on the bottom and make sure the fake players is set to allow in order for this to work inside of your claims. If it's not claimed, well, it should work. So with that in mind, all we have to do now is place the acacia logs and we'll notice that it places the logs. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want. So what I'm going to do for this little setup is I'm going to place the fluid extractor so that way it's facing this right now it is not. So I should be able to go and use a wrench to rotate this. And so now it should be facing the acacia log. And we notice it's already starting to take damage because this is slowly but surely, even without power, starting to pull out latex. Now on the other side, I'm going to do the exact same thing, except this time I'm going to place it correctly. And now this side should also be pulling latex. But what I want is I want this side to have a tank and I'm going to try and get away with using just two fluid extractors. Yeah, I know it sounds insane, but I'm going to do it. And this side is going to be set up for the latex processing unit. Now I went ahead and applied some power, got my latex processing unit set up here. And I want to go ahead and talk about the way you can send items. It's really nice that you can actually send items from one location to another with this mod simply by using this grid, which is very familiar and used in a lot of mods. So we should be able to just simply push our latex into our machine over here but we're going to have to tell it which side it can receive from. So now that I set this side also to pull, it's going to now pull. We're also going to need a sink and we should be able to get a sink very quickly. And I'm going to place the sink just right here on top. Uh, and with that, I can say, go ahead and pull water in. So this is going to process and this is where we're going to notice our next change that has happened to this mod. And it now just gives us just regular dry rubber. No need for micro crafting. No more will we have to worry about that. It just gives us the rubber. Um, so that was another nice change. Oh, also, and keep this in mind, I totally set up the face wrong. That's why it wasn't initially sending. Um, the face is the face that's connected to this block. So we need to think about it from that direction. So technically the back would be sending. And that also means on this one, the back would be sending on this one as well. And that should send unless the face is the one that can receive. I, It's the face. Okay, so yes, I still have it backwards. So the face is connected to the log is technically the back of the log. That's really confusing. That's really hard to understand. Without a visual of the way your machine is setting and what's connected to it, it becomes, to, it becomes a little difficult to read sometimes. Those little things are good to know. Now, to be able to do any sort of auto crafting, we are going to need an external storage 
that is placed on the back of this tank that now has latex. And then we're gonna need to set this to fluid mode. And then I'm also going to set the priority uh, to this a little higher. Um, and then I'm gonna make sure that everything else is set to fine. It should be fine like this um, because we shouldn't end up with anything lower, but just in case we can make sure that we always say, hey, make sure to only put latex in this slot. And so we can take a bucket actually of the latex. We should be able to put that in the filter. And now this will only ever make sure to store latex in here. Now there's really only a couple of other things to automate in this mod and it's smooth sailing from here within this mod. And that is going to be, we need to pull from the, uh, the latex processor, which is going to receive our rubber. And then we just need to smelt that whenever we need to craft with it. But then we also need to get into a new machine that is going to incorporate this fluid. And that is going to be the industrial foregoing dissolution chamber. Yes, that is a mouthful. But this thing right here is going to uh, be the biggest thing that you want to automate. So let's go ahead and get all of this. And by, by the way, you see now we have the plastic here. Let's go ahead and take this out and just smelt our first bits of plastic in our super fast smelter. <laughs> the thing is so quick. Um, so dissolution chamber done. And to automate this, it's not that bad. It's really not that bad. Um, so I'm going to place it right here, actually. You know what? Let's, yeah, let's place it right under this. No big deal. We're going to give it some power and we are going to need an importer for this. Um, so we'll have an importer and then we just need a crafter. So I'm going to use an iron crafter. That's probably as much space as we'll ever need for this. And it needs to be facing into the dissolution chamber. So on the back here, we'll make sure that the back is set to pull. Make sure the fluid input is also set to pull. And then make sure the output is set to wherever we want to send this, which in my case is going to be pushing to the bottom. And that's really all you need. And just connect up your importer and we are ready to rock and roll. Now we're just going to get all of this sort of connected in and we are just about ready to start crafting up all of our different machine casings from this mod. Now, the first things we should definitely automate are these things. These are the upgrades. And I, I usually go straight for the tier two. I've never really used... Uh, these tier ones, uh, and I never found them super useful. So definitely going to the tier two if you already have diamonds ready to go. And by the time you're getting to this mod, I would call it definitely a mid to late game mod anyways. So yeah, it's definitely worth using. And the first thing we want to speed up is probably our latex processor. So let's go ahead and place this in. Let me go ahead and clear a block. And yes, now we have access to our crafter. So we should be able to start first on this. So let's go ahead and craft that. And we're going to notice it's going to send this in and the latex from our tank. And it's then going to process this up slowly but surely. But once we put the speed upgrades in this as well, it'll go insanely fast. So that speed upgrade can be put in here. And we're going to notice this go a bit faster now. So this is going to start producing way more. And the other upgrades, like the processing upgrade, these are also going to start making it go faster. And then it becomes like one of those clicker games, right? Where you cl keep clicking the button and then you keep upgrading and prestiging and upgrading and prestiging and upgrading and prestiging. Yeah, it's, it's basically that. Now, before we get into like the more advanced stuff, we still have to do another thing. And that is going to be farming our mobs that are right here. To do that, we need a mob slaughter factory. This thing's not too bad to make. However, it does need power and it is going to need mobs in order to slaughter. So uh, we need to also supply it with a couple of tanks. And so for this, it's going to produce pink slime and liquid meat. So this is also pink slime production. So I'm gonna push the pink slime to one side and then meat, I'm gonna push to the other side. And I'll never think about the meat again because it's really only used for a couple of things. Uh, for example, you can fill a meat feeder, which if that's your one way of getting a uh, constant saturation, that's a great way to do it. But in our case, we're not going to use it for that. Um, and I'm not going to use it for its other intended purpose, which is to actually process ores. Um, so, <laughs> which is a, a weird way of doing it, but we cannot do that right now. So let's go ahead and put a range upgrade in here. And this is how it is going to pretty much farm mobs. And so it should be able to farm these mobs. And we're going to notice pink slime filling right away. And that should be going into the tanks. Let's make sure. Pink slime, push. Well, it should be. This is going in that tank. This is not going into this tank. So 
I don't think there's any sort of redstone underneath here causing any problems. Let's just make sure again. Push. Maybe I'm going to need, let's see, a bucket. Maybe we can go ahead and, and maybe jumpstart it with a bucket. Who knows? Let's see. Oh, there it goes. So now it's starting to feed in. For some reason, I just wasn't able to see it. Maybe it also has some sort of like lag reduction where it doesn't send things right away. But perfect. Now we have the pink slime going exactly where we want it. And yet again, just like before, I've also ran a cable down. And for this, we want an external storage on the bottom. And we can go ahead and say, make sure to only ever put pink slime in here. I guess in this case, we might need, let's see, pink slime. We might need to actually display the liquid. Oh no, it looks like we have to, oh wait, let's put this in fluid mode. There we go. And there we go. Now we can set it to only ever do that and make sure it's a priority higher than it's than anything else. And we should be good, right? So now we have pink slime that we can also craft with. So now that we have pink slime and latex, we can now start to auto craft the simple machine frame and now the advanced machine frame, all of which is pretty nice. Now I don't have netherite scrap automated, but I'm gonna go ahead and get that done. And now we should have scrap automated and we have plenty of ancient debris that came from our builder from the mining dimension. So we're definitely good in that regard. So now the only real thing that we need is to make sure we have some silk touched iron ore in some fashion. And that's how we're going to make the ore laser base itself. Then we need to worry about getting the advanced machine. We've already done that. And I've already set up the auto craft for the Olimodium pickaxe and vibranium gears. And it does appear these recipes have changed a little bit. So no longer do you have that hammer. Now it does actually take the plates themselves and also the ingots themselves to make the rods. So a lot more all the modium is required now to actually make an all the modium pick. So with that, we should have everything we need. All we're going to have to focus on now is crafting the actual lenses. So let's go ahead and just set up a basic white lens and we can do it just like that. And so we'll put that pattern in. And um, yeah, so to be able to get the lasers to work, we need an ore laser base and, an, and we're going to need to surround it with laser drills. And you can surround this in all kinds of different ways. The big thing is going to be getting upgrades in all of these, making them a bit faster than they are by default because they're not super fast by default. Storing the items, which is a whole task in itself. And um, yeah, we should be able to generate all the modium raw materials. So when we take a look at the raw for example, all the modium ore, we will see that this has a chance of producing with a yellow lens in the deep dark biome, specifically, by the way, uh, it will have a chance of producing the raw all the modium. Same goes for vibranium. Vibranium can be done in a warped or crimson forest in the nether and has uses a green laser lens and it needs to be between these Y levels, right? Um, and then on obtainium, this is probably gonna be a high lens. So it needs to be in an end high lens biome with a purple lens and this will produce it as well. And this is really nice because this can be ore processed. So later on when we get into other mods that can do like six times ore processing, that is going to be phenomenal and we're gonna have more than enough for end game. Now setting up this is quite simple and I'm just gonna demonstrate it here as next episode we are gonna focus on setting it up actually. So you can set it up just like this, but you need to keep in mind that this working area is where you can have this within. So you could, just for a demonstration, you could technically have it set up just like this as well, and it will work all the same. Just so long as the target is within this bounds, it will find it. So it's pretty cool. And you can make a giant cube and make this thing incredibly fast. So with all of that, I would say today was quite productive. We got quite a few things set up. I really like the bee little farm set up, but also getting this far into Industrial 4 going, while it might not seem like a whole lot behind me, this is pretty much the gateway to most of the machines in this mod. And all you have to do is just simply craft the machine frame and we have one of the machines. Now, there is a thing that gets a little bit more advanced from this mod, and uh, there's also a new soul addition to this mod that allows you to use a fluid extractor just like you would use, well, it's a soul extractor, but you would use just like you would use on the wither, which we're gonna be diving into eventually, uh, and you can actually speed up machines with it. It's another kind of neat mechanic, and we might dabble with it just a bit. But until next episode, you're gonna have to wait. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today. If you did, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already, and also give this video a huge thumbs up. 
Of course, it's now time to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode. And that amazing thanks is going to go out to Aru2011. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way. Over on the Discord, becoming a Discord Premium member and supporting me in one of the best ways possible. Guys, I hope to see you in the next episode. So be sure to click that subscribe button, ring that notification bell. And well, as always, thanks for watching. Bye.